Okay. <laughs> so we're going to start seated today. And it is, again, the day after the summer solstice. So perhaps for some folks, it's a warm, sunny, long, bright day. And here in Vermont, it's mid-60s, windy and overcast. <laughs> and uh, so I was thinking that may affect how I take the practice. If I'm moving a little more vigorously to stay warm or just to energize, um, you can take that or just modify and make it a more relaxed practice, whatever you need today. But let us start as we have been doing recently, just warming hands up and then deepening the breath. So whatever you've been up to already today, just feeling the breath coming in fully. Exhale, tuck the chin, release completely and just continue. You can go at a faster pace or kind of slowly as I'm showing here. Breathing in and breathing out. And then we'll just hold the open position. You could do V for victory arms or relax a little bit. Maybe even move your head, just release and relax the neck. And occasionally I like to close the eyes here and just feel the openness of the chest, the kind of uplifting effect of the arms being wide, the deepening of the breath. And then we'll release the fingers to the earth. And if you have a windy day like I do, watching the trees blowing around out there, it's nice to feel the solid earth beneath us. And take a couple moments here. When you feel like it, you can bring the hands to the knees or thighs, and we'll just stay with the breath for a bit. Relax in the belly and noticing the effects as the breath deepens. We really begin to let go of tension, tightness, concerns, thoughts of all kinds that might be taking up space in our brains. And of course we arrive in the present moment when we're one with our breath. And as we make this transition from the busyness of the day, we can do a little scan, just observe where we're at and be aware throughout the practice. So again, modifying if you need to, add in more if you want a more active practice. And we'll go ahead and lift the hands towards the sky, a moment to open towards an intention, an affirmation, a thought of being steady, of being present, connection, gratitude, serenity, <laughs> whatever resonates. And with our intention set, big breath in, hands together overhead and down to the heart. One more time, inhale and exhale. And then opening the eyes, if they're closed, we're gonna uncross the legs here. And I think we better start out with a little bit of the wave. If you're in real time with me, it is Wednesday, I believe. <laughs> I'm attempting a recording of this video, so you may be doing this practice who knows when, who knows where but just beginning with our familiar stretch, forward, back, up, and around. And then we'll take the legs a little bit wider and just do a diagonal stretch, one arm across towards the opposite foot, side to side. A little bit longer. And then I thought I would have us bring the feet closer together here today and just hands behind the hips, lean back a little bit. So we know we're sort of in a preparation for boat pose here, kind of tucking the chin. And then if you care to, just a gentle little uh, round of toe touches. So one foot and then the other towards the floor or both feet at the same time. So we'll just do a few here. Good, coming down, straightening the legs. You can adjust the seat. I think we better do a little propping up the sky for good measure. So press through the palms, point your toes here, bend your arms, flex your feet here. Keep it going. Just relaxing the face. Good. And then we'll come down with the arms and bend one leg, doesn't matter which one. And you can have the hands to the floor, to your thigh here. We're just gonna flex the foot of the leg that's straight and lift for a couple seconds, not too long today, but that's our seated leg lift. And then coming down and a little modified upward plank. I think I did this, perhaps it was Monday. I can't remember, but I had forgotten about it. And then I remembered it and I kind of like it. 
Good, we'll come down. We'll do the other side for our um, uh, seated leg lift here. Okay, so the straight leg goes up just a few inches off the floor. Hold on to your shin or hands to the floor and breathe. You feel those muscles working. Doesn't take too long <laughs> to put them into play. We're going to take our modified upward plank. One leg bent, one leg straight. Then we'll come down. And then let's have options for another round of boat pose. So you could repeat what we did just a moment ago. You could take traditional boat. And then I had a thought today for a little twisted boat. So you feel a little bit like you're paddling your canoe or your kayak with this one. <laughs> side to side. And keep it going a little bit longer. And back to center. Now I'm going to take an upward table. You could do upward plank. Uh, both poses are nice as a counter stretch to boat. And we'll hold for a couple seconds. Upward table or upward plank. And then coming down and just finishing here, soles of the feet together and maybe pressing the fingertips into the floor behind your hips. So just a way to get a little stretch in the hip area and also to lift the chest and open the heart. I'm moving my knees just a little bit to deepen the stretch. And then I'll bring the knees together. We're gonna to come on to the knees. I'm gonna adjust the screen a little bit here. And I thought we'd do a little swaying like the bamboo. <laughs> Since once again, I'm watching all the trees sway out there. So uh, the way I like to do it is maybe to hold on to one wrist with the opposite hand and just go side to side. We'll open up the rib cage. And they talk about the side of the lungs as well. You could think of it that way. And we'll come down. And um, just turning the head a little bit left to right, right to left. And we'll have a stretch for the neck and the back in a bit. And I just want you all to be aware of how you're feeling in this part of the body. Okay, so back to neutral. All fours, we'll get right into our first downward dog. You can do child's pose or forearm down dog instead. And maybe walking the dog a little bit. The other day we did a little pigeon toed downward dog. If you feel like that, turning the big toes in. And then we'll just get our plank flow in right away here. So from a traditional down dog coming forward, shoulders over the wrists. And we usually do three. Three being a lucky number on some days, I guess. <laughs> Great, and maybe one more down dog. Plank, and then let's stretch out briefly in child's pose. Okay, so just take your hips back towards your heels, elongate, relax your head. Couple deep breaths. Just feel that nice sense of being close to the earth. We'll come up on three, not too quickly though. One, two, three, V for victory to put us all in an optimistic frame of mind. <laughs> And then coming back to all fours. And I'm gonna take a familiar move here with one arm. So it's the one where we frame our head and then pull the elbow back, sit the hips back, circle up and around three times. Just give a little check in to your shoulder joint here. And as we come around today, we'll just bring the hand to the floor. We'll go right to the second side. So framing the head with your left arm. Pulling back, circling up and around. Okay. And one more time. And then as the hand comes to the floor, you can plant the left hand, open the right arm. And let's hold for a couple seconds here. And then come down, we'll open the left arm. And guess what? Today we are going to do thread the needle. <laughs> I haven't done it for a little while. So we'll start with the right arm because I just usually start with the right side. I'm going to turn so I'll be facing the screen. Okay, so right arm lifts again. And this time we thread it behind the left wrist. Now, if you don't want to bring your head all the way down, you can go to a yoga block or a pillow like so. Um, you can also stay on your forearm and take your thread the needle this way. I think I'll shoot for the full version, which I haven't done for a while, but here we go. Head down to the floor. Good. 
taking your left arm up and around and then just see how things feel really pressing into the back of the right hand. <laughs> I'm a little tippy today, but we'll see. I'm on my toes of my left foot. And yes, I am gonna try to lift my left leg. Okay, wherever you get to, breathe and find a good stretch, no strain. Oh, I forgot, I also like bringing the hand to the floor overhead. I usually keep my toes down for that so I don't roll over. And now I'm really seeing the world from a different perspective. <laughs> okay, come out with care. So we'll unwind and take a counter stretch, lifting your right arm. I'm gonna turn back around this way. Okay, and then our second side, our left arm, breathing in. Again, modify if you wanna bring your head to a yoga block or a pillow or come onto your forearm like so. Otherwise, maybe all the way down to the floor and then you'll be just seeing how things feel. Lifting the right arm, wrapping it behind your back, maybe straightening the right leg. <laughs> maybe you have some furniture and you can rest your toes on a couch or a chair or something. Otherwise, see if you can find that sweet spot where you stay relatively stable. And then hand to the floor overhead really intensifies the stretch in the kind of upper shoulder neck area I find. Okay, we'll come out with care. Unwind, take a counter stretch. And then let's kind of recalibrate, just coming up, draw a big circle, breathe in, breathe out once more, turn your head side to side. And we'll bring the hands to the floor. Now we're gonna get into our low lunge. And you could do that from table or downward dog. And I'll give you a little time if you're taking down dog, just to kind of press through the heels, maybe walk the dog a little bit. And then I usually do bring the right foot forward to begin with. So you could lift the right leg high, step that foot through, and then coming on up. And your choice here, you could stay in the high lunge, maybe hands to the hips or to your thigh, or bring your hands down to the floor. And just take a couple moments here. I'm just gonna get into a side stretch and starting with my right foot forward, my back will be to you. But we've done this before. So a nice way to get into it is to bring the left knee down, take the foot a quarter of a turn and then bring your right forearm to your right thigh. So this is kind of a modified side stretch. And some of you may feel like lifting your back leg and then you get into a kind of a full version of the pose, more traditional, I guess. So a couple deep breaths. Now a little something tricky as we come out of it and you can either come to table and watch first or join me and just peek up at your screen <laughs> as I'm uh, talking and you're moving as well. So from downward dog, this is a little number where you cross one ankle in front of the other. Okay, so it's sort of a crossover down dog. And what I was feeling here when I did earlier is really pressing into the heel of that back foot. It's at the back of the mat. And it gets a good stretch into the ankle, the calf, the Achilles tendon area. I guess I'll call it the crisscross downward dog. <laughs> so drag to the other side. One foot is to the back of the mat. The other crosses in front of the shin, goes off the mat really. Okay, so kind of interesting. And actually there's another part to this, which I'll get to in a moment. So for now, let's come to either child's pose or a plank. And then plank people can take a brief child's pose just to rest, relax, appreciate the moment. Okay, we do have the lunge to the second side. So from table or downward dog, take your left leg, bring that foot forward. Take a moment to bring your head up kind of adjust and reflect upon how you want to take the lunge today. So it could be hands to the hips or to your thigh or hands to the floor. And then we're going to get into that side stretch and I'll just go through the two different possibilities, bringing the right knee down, taking the foot a quarter of a turn and coming to the pose like so, which is great. Um, if you feel comfortable lifting the back leg, you kind of pivot the right foot and same support of the forearm to the thigh. The breezes are blowing out there. You probably can't hear it, but it's like 
there's a lot of wind in this location. So it's kind of, a, it's uplifting, I guess. <laughs> it's a lot of energy in those trees. Okay, so I'm gonna have you come to a position where you can pause for a moment. And this is a little funny, but if you wanted to, you could put your head in your chin like this. And I used to always say it's like when we were kids watching television, and I don't know how our necks ever su survived, but we used to be like this on the floor. But if you want to just watch for a second, and I thought what I would offer today is the possibility of repeating the crisscross downward dog. Okay, so one ankle crosses over to the opposite side of the mat. And then do you remember this? I think it's called fallen triangle or fallen pyramid. So it's kind of like a side plank, but my feet are um, in a different position. They're not parallel. Okay, so I'll let you try that if you want. I'm gonna do it to the second side so you have a different view. The crisscross downward dog. On my second side, my right foot is going over to the left and then I'm bringing my weight to my right hand and lifting my left arm. Okay, so it's very much like a side plank, but the legs are in this kind of triangle position. And just getting ourselves into poses that we're not typically in during the rest of the day. I think it's always a good thing. So I'm giving you time to do it once to each side. I'm kind of quickly going through both sides again, just to give you a visual. And when you feel complete, if you've taken the twisted triangle, I think it's twisted triangle or fallen pyramid. <laughs> I've heard both names. We'll come down. And just give yourself a moment on all fours and then let's take a little breather on our stomachs. And I know we've done quite a bit already, so you don't need to do the forearm plank, but some of you may like to. So possibly a little forearm plank. And then a moment to rest and relax, just bringing yourself down. You can support your chin or your forehead on your hands. You might like to bend the legs, windshield wipe the feet. And just take some deep breaths. And then I thought today on our, be our bellies, um, a little locust pose would be good. Haven't done this for a while. And I'll start with the arms along by our sides. So first thing I like to do is to kind of tuck the tailbone. And then I'm gonna have us lift the head, the chest and the arms as we breathe in. And then we'll lower as we breathe out. And then lift one leg. Your forehead could be to the mat. I'm lifting my head so you can hear me. Lift the other leg, just the leg. Okay, and we'll repeat that upper body, inhale. And either one leg at a time or both legs at the same time. Okay, lower down, we'll do the full locust pose here, the head, the chest, the arms and the legs. Now we're gonna hold and breathe. And it's interesting, I find it quite a difference if I extend my arms to frame my head. I actually find this a little more difficult. Um, so <laughs> that's probably why I do this version more often, but hold and breathe. If anyone wants to go into bow pose, you can, more of a back bend. Otherwise, whichever version of locus you're taking. Swarrow cactus arms, also a possibility. Okay, so we've strengthened quite a bit here. We're gonna come down with the hands and slowly up and back to child's pose. You could do puppy pose instead, which would be the hips lifted a little bit. Or maybe a wide-legged child's pose, knees far apart, and possibly your head supported on your hands. So just take your time, let your body really relax after the strengthening poses that we've done thus far. And then we will be coming up to standing. And I'm gonna do one more down dog. You could come up to a low squat or table pose instead. I might do that pigeon toe downward dog again. And stepping or hopping the feet forward and carefully, carefully a reverse swan dive. And I will adjust my screen here. Let's see if I have that correct. Okay, no, not quite. <laughs> my head is cut off. A little bit more there. So as we make our way to standing, I'm gonna come back to Mountain Mudra again. I've been doing this quite regularly, but again, because the wind is blowing, the trees are swaying. It helps me to feel grounded and steady. You can turn the thumbs out for a more uplifting effect. You can turn the thumbs in towards the midline of the body for a little more grounding, calming effect. 
And take your time here adjusting to this new position. And we'll release the hand, shake it out. Um, why don't we do our hip circles for good measure? So the feet a little wider than the hips, usually two or three circles each direction is great. I'm going to adjust my screen one more time here. And then come back. Now, um, I've mentioned a couple times that it's quite a bit cooler here than where some of you are practicing probably. So I'm going to suggest breath of joy. <laughs> and this can be done. You want to watch out for the wall at a nice gentle pace if you want to make it more of a cooling uh, experience, or you can do it more vigorously if you want to warm up. <sighs> if you have thoughts, feelings, emotions you want to release, you can <sighs> really sigh it out. Inhale, inhale. Inhale, exhale. Again, it's called breath of joy. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Exhale once more. All the way up. Keep your eyes open. Bring your hands to your belly. And pause. Feel the warmth of the body. Feel the energizing effects of the combination of the breath and the movement that we just did. And we'll release, and I think we'll start the standing practice today with Ukatasana, powerful pose or chair pose. So you can just have your feet about hip width apart. And as if there was a chair that you're sitting back on, we'll bend the legs and straighten. Let's do that three times. Okay, thighs stay parallel here. And then you may remember this little number. You can hold the hands any way you'd like. I often will interlace my fingers. Okay, and then I'm just going to take one leg out to the side and back. So that leg stays a little bit uh, bent. The standing leg straightens a little bit, but not all the way. Okay, so this is a lateral movement of one leg. Let's see what your hip has to say. I'm doing somewhere around five, I guess. So one more. It's also working our balance. That's easy to feel. Okay, second side. <laughs> One side may feel different than the other. Let's say three, try to relax the shoulders. And five, great. And then two feet to the floor, breathe in. Now any forward fold that you'd like, you could use your yoga strap if it's handy, hold on to it behind your back. You could interlace your fingers, you could do ragdoll, or hold on behind your um, shins there and give a little pull. So wherever you get to, try to release and relax your neck, your face, your jaw. Ah. And we'll come up relatively slowly. I'm just going to come back to V for victory arms. Inhale. Exhale. Good opening to all good things here. And release, shake it out a bit. We'll come to our wide-legged position next. And okay, one more thing that's gonna have a warming effect. So I do apologize if you're in a hot environment <laughs> and you're feeling the warmth, but uh, just know we'll have a cool down at the end. So we're gonna come to horse stance, engage the tummy, engage the pelvic floor, and then make your little fisted hands, we call those baby fists. And this is from Kundalini Yoga. And I don't know why I felt like doing this today, but it's like the, a, a drummer or a little kid pounding on a drum. And if your shoulder feels okay with it, your arm can go all the way up overhead and the other hand in front of your belly. Okay, just remember in Kundalini Yoga, they do this vigorously for three to five minutes. And you don't have to go all the way overhead. Okay, keep breathing, relax the face. If you can, without bonking yourself with your hand, <laughs> put the opposite hand forward. It might feel funny. That's kind of the non-dominant side, I guess, but keep it going just a little longer. Good, and then we'll pause. Eye pointed star, breathe in and breathe out. Now a quarter of a turn here. So you could be a mirror image of me by going to your right. And you could angle your foot all the way on the floor, kind of like we do for warrior one, or as I have mine, you could lift off of the heel. So whatever feels best for your balance, we're gonna engage the tummy and hold here. 
giant beach ball arms. So like a nice round, soft beach ball is coming your way. And then we'll float and fly. We'll go down and up three times. Inhale and exhale. Once more. And then considering a standing twist, and we know we have different options for this particular pose. One would be to bring the hand across the body to the opposite side and keep your arms straight and rotate and enjoy the view from here. Another possibility would be palms together, elbow to that knee, and usually it takes going a little farther back with the back foot. So this would be the full prayer twist. And some people like to straighten their arms once they're in prayer twist. This is from Ashtanga yoga. They touch the fingertips to the floor and the other fingertips are up towards the ceiling. <laughs> Pretty deep twist indeed. Okay, wherever you're at, let's unwind with care. Okay, take your time coming back up and to center, we'll pause and relax in five pointed star. And then to the other side. Okay. So <laughs> this floor, I'm tilting downhill here, so it feels interesting. This has been a floor that goes down that way. So I feel like I'm about to kind of roll along down with the, with the floor, but um, <laughs> I'll try to stay stable. You can have your whole foot to the floor or press into the ball of the foot, come off the heel, engage the tummy, lift for beach ball arms. A couple seconds. And we'll float and fly, coming down and up, inhale, and exhale, one more time. And then considering our standing twist, <clears throat> beginning with your arm straight, bringing the hand across to the opposite leg, and this is a great place to stay. You can also bring your palms together, bend your arms, hook your elbow to your knee. And my back is to the screen, but it's the same thing that I was showing on the other side. If anyone cares to go into the Ashtanga Yoga variation, extend both arms here. Okay, and then we want to come out of this with care. So do take your time. <laughs> All the way back, our old friend, Five Pointed Star. A little coiled python just because that helps us to kind of come back to neutral i think coiled python is the semicircle side to side and we'll come all the way back up and then let's step hop or heel toe the feet together and i'd like to just do a little pause here hand to the chest hand to the belly and our final uh, phase of the standing practice could be really any pose that you'd like, maybe a balance of your choice. For whatever reason, I felt like doing half moon today. I often do that on Fridays. It's my Friday <laughs> balancing pose. But if you do want to join me in half moon, you might consider finding a yoga block if one is available. And again, you could be doing eagle or tree pose or take a little rest, anything else that you'd like. But those joining me in tree, we'll take a wide stance. We'll turn our foot a quarter of a turn in two side furniture. So I often show bringing my hand to a futon or a shelf or something like that. Here I'm going right down to the yoga block, lifting my back leg. I don't tend to do this on my own so much, so it's fun to do it with others. We'll just take our time if you're in half moon, just feel the expansive, bright quality of the pose. Good. And you can take any variation you'd like, but when you're ready to come down, just do so with care. And then shift, adjust, half moon to the second side. So your leg will bend. And some of you will probably get your hand out to the floor. Okay, this is where the floor is tipping <laughs> towards the direction I'm going. So I feel like I'm just gonna slide down. But so far, so good. Okay, find your full expression, which means just as far as you want to go in terms of opening and expanding and holding and breathing. And just another second or two. And we'll come down with care. 
And I'll just show an option for those who may have a yoga block handy. Just bring it between your feet and forward a little bit. And then this is the wide legged forward fold with the possibility of coming halfway, hands to the block. Or if you feel like going further down, maybe stacking your hands and possibly getting your head to your hands. Ooh, super relaxing. Also a really nice deep stretch for the back of the legs. And you could stay where you are. You could do the little shifting side to side that we sometimes do. You could take your arms behind your back and lift off of your back with the fingers interlaced. And then when you feel like you've had enough in your forward fold, come up and pause once again. And five pointed star, just feeling that chi signal, the warmth, the brightness, the light of your body and your being. Back to standing and perhaps there's yet another pose that you'd like to do. Otherwise you can join me just kind of catching your breath and maybe turning towards a window if you have one nearby. So you see a little bit of nature, a tree, a mountain, a cactus, a stone wall, <laughs> whatever it may be. And your chi wash, just feeling positive, clear healing energy washing over you and through you. We'll be coming down to seated. So I'll give everyone time to get a sip of water, to adjust their screens. And as you come on down, we do have time for roly poly rock and roll. You can stay seated if that feels better, or you can join me in rocking back and up. I always check my environment first. Okay, <laughs> coast is clear. I'll do three rounds today. And then we'll be coming up to seated. And I have a feeling that um, it'd be nice to do a, a deep seated twist uh, at this point in practice. Um, so we have had a standing twist. I think we've warmed up for this with thread the needle and a few other things. So possibilities would be to take one leg across and keep your other leg straight. This works best for a lot of people. If you are comfortable bending both legs, you can take a moment or two. I always have to kind of E, just adjust to the sensation in the hips when I go to both legs cross. And sitting up nice and tall. And if you don't feel like twisting, stay here, elongate the spine and breathe and uh, just enjoy the stretch that you'll be feeling in your hips. Otherwise your arm coming across, so I have my right arm coming to my left leg. Okay? And then my fingertips to the floor to help me to elongate the spine. And I'm going to hold here for a little bit today. So you might be wrapping the arm around your leg, or as I showed before, just the elbow to the knee. And you might be turning your head towards your back shoulder. So I'm just going to breathe and make it a little longer hold than we sometimes do. This is best done not on a full stomach. <laughs> a snack is okay, but not after a big meal, which you're still digesting. We'll take a counter stretch, just unwinding, turning the other direction. Now, if you happen to have both legs crossed as I do, you can come back and just for a little deeper stretch in the hips, hinge at the hips and lean forward for a second or two. Come on up and we'll be changing sides. And I think I've shown this recently, but if you happen to have your left foot on top, which I do, maybe you have your right foot on top, but put your hands onto the floor next to that top foot and press yourself up, swirl around, keep swirling, don't stop swirling. Maybe possibly <laughs> you'll end up on side two. If you don't end up there, you can make your way there any way you'd like. And I'll just show again, some people will be having one leg straight, one leg bent. I'm gonna attempt this double cross-legged position again. Okay, so a little time here to elongate the spine, to check in with how we're feeling. And then for those taking the twist, the fingertips to the floor, the arm reaching up and coming across the body. So hooking elbow to knee or wrapping the arm around the knee. And we'll just take a little time here. And you can just notice where you feel a stretch. Maybe you turn your head towards your back shoulder. 
Maybe close your eyes. And it's so great for so many different reasons, these deeper twists for muscles in the back, for the internal organs, for the shoulders and neck. Another second or two. And then take that counter twist going the other way. And if you do happen to have both legs crossed, come to center and think about a moment or two, possibly of leaning forward just a little bit. A little go goes a long way with this one. We'll come back and you'll uncross the legs, thank goodness. And give a good little stretch here. Why don't we just do a pose or two just to kind of neutralize and then we'll come down to our back. So we'll do two rounds of the wave. And then we'll do a little staff or stick, not the propping up the sky, but more of the uh, static position where we hold and breathe. You turn your head a little if you want to. And then hands to the floor. And I'll conclude here with the option of pressing into the hands, lifting the chest, opening the heart, or coming up to upward plank. And enjoying the view. <laughs> Checking in once more with your beautiful ceiling above. And we'll lower down. And why don't we each take a forward fold of our choice? And that could be a wide-legged forward fold. It could be Jamu Shursasana with the legs out in front. Or the one that I really like is the bound angle. And we did tortoise or turtle pose a couple days ago. Um, another way to take the bound angle forward fold is interlacing the fingers, bringing them over your toes. And for some, keeping the spine long, tucking the chin may feel better. For others, maybe rounding, bringing your head down towards your feet. You can also press your elbows into your knees a little bit to deepen the stretch in the legs. And this is a really nice way to release anything that's tight or tense, especially in the shoulders, upper back, jaw, and neck. And feel free to stay as long as you want to. When you're ready to come up, just bring your knees together and we will come on to our backs and we'll have time for a little stretching and relaxing before we come to our final relaxation. So we'll lower down, bring the knees in, maybe put a pillow under your head. And how about the um, hands to the knees here, just circling, small circles with the knees. And it really gives a nice massage to the low back. And we'll go the other way with those little circles. And then just hugging one knee in, stretch the other leg out. You can circle your foot that's lifted a few times both directions. And then the other side. And if you don't have time for a lot of yoga, this one pose is, is quite nice for the back. It's a really good maintenance move. And then I'm just going to come full circle with the toe touches, which we did earlier in a seated position. Arms along by our sides, and this is the Kind of nice, not too crazy, vigorous core exercise where we bring the feet forward and down. Feel the work of the midsection as you keep your pelvis pretty stable and steady. And I don't know how many I'm doing. <laughs> Maybe I'll do about three more. Okay, forward and down. And then just Considering what would feel best for your practice at this time, maybe a little freestyle stretch, maybe a recline twist. We've had a couple of twists already today, so you could add your final twist on your back and or take a figure four, some bridge pose, maybe some happy baby. And for some people, maybe a candlestick, or as I've been showing for a few practices now, the hips lifted on a foam block, which is just a very comfortable position for my lower back anyway. And once I get up here, I usually like to kind of move around a little, maybe I'll bicycle the legs or crisscross a little. And then maybe a round of bridge pose with the block in place. And if you feel pretty steady, you can stretch out one leg and maybe both. 
listen to your lower back with this one, but if you're feeling okay, you can take the arms back and then it's kind of a fish pose, kind of a supported fish pose. Well, I will give you time to stay on your block or to take any other stretch or pose or movement that would feel good for your practice today. I've mentioned a few things, happy baby, figure four, freestyle, <laughs> moving the arms and legs. And just feeling the ease of the body. So after the movements that we've done, we're in a pretty flexible state. So we can just enjoy those final stretches in kind of a relaxed, easy way. And then we'll begin to transition to bring ourselves into Shavasana, a well-deserved relaxation. And you can put a little something under your head if you haven't already, or under your knees, maybe cover your eyes to block out the light. And just feel the warmth of the body, feel the ease of the body, feel the solid earth beneath you. Take a full breath in, exhale, release. And then again, full breath in, exhale, release. Letting go of anything we don't need, thoughts, tensions in the physical body, anything that's not serving us, just let it go. And you can feel the belly rising and falling with the breath. Feel the shoulders relaxing, the face softening. And we know there's nothing more we need to do. So we'll take the next little bit of time in stillness chance to refresh and refuel, chance to simply drop back, to release, to relax, and to let go completely. We'll stay here for a little bit, so just knowing we're still connected in this present moment in time, feeling the peace and tranquility within and around us. In just a few more moments. And then without moving, we can simply tune again to our bodies and be aware of the physical body on the earth. And maybe just kind of attuned to the really the energetic aspect of your being. So feeling that chi, that prana, that life force in a really vital way at this point in the practice. And then we'll just begin to move little by little, fingers and toes, hands and feet. And just keeping this nice feeling of calm with us, we'll reawaken, move your head, make a little sound if you want to yawn or oh, sigh. <laughs> And um, also possibly before you come up, you could take your hands to the back of your neck and just give a little massage there for a final bit of relaxation. And then we'll be coming up with care. You can come over to one side or any way that you wanna bring yourself up, feet out in front or legs crossed. And I'll give everyone a moment or two to get themselves up to seated, blinking and adjusting to the light of the room. Let's go ahead and bring the hands together. I thought we'd finish today with a set that I like quite a bit uh, with the hands nice and warm. We'll open like we're reading a book. Then we'll take the back of the hands together, 
press the fingers towards the earth as you lean forward. Come up in Lotus Mudra, the thumbs and the pinkies touching and crown yourself king and queen, prince or princess for the day. And then hands to the heart, we'll take that again. Breathe in, breathe out. Lotus Mudra overhead. And then hands to the heart, prayer position, Anjali Mudra. And we'll take a few final moments here. So I'm going to have you stay on mute today if you're joining me in real time um, because I am attempting this recording <laughs> and it will make it a little smoother at the end. But do take time to um, appreciate the good energy we've generated, maybe to come back to your intention, affirmation, or dedication if you have one. And then um, you are on mute, but join me at home if you want to. We'll close with one round of OM, inhaling to begin. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, peace. And as messengers of peace, let's bow the head to the heart, acknowledging the light, the energy, the peace within. And then a moment to lift our gaze to honor the light, energy, and peace within one another with a namaste to all. Thank you all. Namaste. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. Stay warm, stay cool, <laughs> whatever you need to. And I'll see you soon. I'm going to come in and end the recording for those who you be seeing this as a recording on your device. So I'll wave goodbye that way. <laughs>